Satan shall be removed from Torah, says Yeshua. That would you, that would you do? Yeshua, Israel, Yehuda, Yehudim, Ephraim, Melo, 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 Hagoi. I am just so excited for Fourth of July. Wow, dude, just wow. W- wait, what did I do? Who are you? You're just so insensitive. You're like all the rest. Do you even know? What 4th of July is about? <laughs> uh, does anyone? <laughs> is it about, um, barbecue and fireworks? Wow, I didn't expect you to get that right. Have a good day. What to the American slave? is your 4th of July. I answer, a day that reveals to him more than all other days of the year the gross injustice and cruelty to which he is a constant victim. To him, your celebration is a sham. Your boasted liberty, an unholy license, your national greatness, swelling vanity, Your sounds of rejoicing are empty and heartless. Your denunciation of tyrants, brass-fronted impudence. Your shouts of liberty and equality, hollow mockery. Your prayers and hymns, your sermons and thanksgivings, with all your religious parade and solemnity, are to him mere bombast, fraud, deception, impiety, and hypocrisy, a thin veil to cover up crimes that would it, that would disgrace a nation of savages. There's not a nation of the earth guilty of practices more shocking and bloody than are the people of these United States at this very hour. At a time like this, scorching irony not convincing argument is needed. Oh, had I the ability and could reach the nation's ear, I would today pour forth a stream, a fiery stream of biting ridicule, blasting reproach, withering sarcasm, and stern rebuke. For it is not light that is needed, but fire. It is not the gentle shower, but thunder. We need the storm. The whirlwind, the earthquake, the feeling of the nation must be quickened. The conscience of the nation must be roused. The propriety of the nation must be startled. The hypocrisy of the nation must be exposed. And the crimes against God and man must be proclaimed and denounced. Yahweh. Welcome back, Yahushua Ministries. Say Shalom Alehem and peace been today. My friend, there is so many deceptions which been going on for almost 2,000 years of religion deceptions. But now, since, night, since 1776, there is so many things happen to so many countries and people do not realize what they're doing to their own self. They hurt themselves. When they say they are citizens, 
no matter who they claim themselves, Cubans, Haitians, Jamaicans, Americans, no matter who they claim themselves to be. When we take a look out to our description, there is only one land Abaya was promised to the children of Israel. It's not Haiti, or Jamaica, or Bahamas, or Cuba, or America, or any lands. The land Abaya was promised to our forefathers was the land of Canaan. It's in the 17 chapter, verse 8. The whole land of Canaan, where you now reside as a foreigner, I will give as an everlasting possession to you and to your descendant after you, and I will be their creator. So that means Abaya will never tell Abraham he is a citizen of the land of Canaan. He said, I will give it to you to possess it. At the time you are a foreigner, Abraham never celebrates any kind of celebration on the land of Canaan. Why? Isaac never celebrates any kind of things in Canaan. Why? Israel never celebrates any kind of celebration on the land of Canaan. Why? Because Abaya will tell them, do not follow the way of the hidden. The people are driven out to give it to them. Do not follow them. Do not follow those people when I take you out of Egypt. Do not follow their custom either. But we do not listen to you. My friend, this scripture must be speaking for its own self. To our day scripture. Let's take the book of Genesis 47, chapter verse 29. When the time drew near to Israel, Israel is Jacob. To die, he called his son Joseph and said, If I have found favor in your eyes, put your hand under my tithe and promise me that you will show me kindness and show faithfully do not bury me in Egypt. When he spent almost all his lifetime in Egypt, when he knows his days are numbering, he called his son Joseph. He says, Joseph, I will want you to put your hand into my tie. That's the way people make people swear a long time to tell the truth. I want you to swear to me if I found favor into your eyes. Promise me that you will not bury me in this land and Egypt. Why Israel has to ask his son, he no want to bury on the land of Egypt. Joseph has to ask Pharaoh permission to bring his father, to bury his father where Abraham was buried, because Abraham buy a land there for burial. That's why he said, I buy me a land to bury on, to bury my family, to marry my dead, to bury my dead. Not to own as a possession when you carry it, but to bury your dead. That's only one place you can buy. But we've been fooled around by, by house, by land, when only the people who own land join the decision of Israel. It's not even for them to sell, just to stay as, as their soldier, to live in as a foreigner, because you cannot bring them with you. If you, if you own a land, when you go, you should be carried with you. How can they are yours and you couldn't carry them with you? That make any sense? You own something and you go someplace and you don't carry them with you? Why Joseph, why Israel has to call Joseph? He said, promise, I want you to put your hand in them my tithe. And I want you to promise to me, if I found favor in your eyes, do me a favor. Please do not bury me in the land of Egypt. But when I lie down one with my fathers, carry me out of Egypt and bury me with them. Yosef answered, I will do as you have requested, Father. Why Yosef say, Father, I will do exactly what you request. I will not gonna bury you on the pagan lands, Egypt. I will bury you, the land Yahweh will give it to you, the land of Canaan where your fathers buried. 
But today, we're taking verse versa because nobody teaching the word of Yahweh. Genesis 47, chapter verse 31. Swear to me, Jacob said to Joseph, swear to him and Israel bore and worship at the head of his bed. He said, Joseph, swear to me, swear to me, you're not going to bury me in the land of Egypt. So why? Why there is a famine on the land of Canaan? Why he went to Egypt and he know he's going to die and he asking his son, you get to promise me. I want you to swear. I don't pay. I want you to swear. You're not going to let my bones go on here. Go bury me the way my father is buried. Because the land of Egypt, he was on a stranger. Abraham was by a land on the land of Canaan, the name of Shechem, to bury his family. When we take the book of Exodus 2, chapter verse 8, I have come down to rescue from you to the land of Egyptians and to bring you them out of the land, a good and some spacious land, and then so it would make an honor. The home of the Canaanites, the Atheites, the Amorites, the Perizzites, the Avites, and the Jebusites. I don't see the land of United States of America, do you? I don't see the state of Israel, do you? Yahweh say, I have come down to rescue my people, the children of Israel, from the land of the Egyptians. And to bring them up out of the land to a good and spacious land, a land flowing with milk and honey, the womb of the Canaanites, the Atheites, the Amorites, the Parasites, the Avites, and the Jebusites. I don't see no United States of America. Why you are a citizen of the United States when Abaya would? Goes that thing and say, I'll give the land of Canaan, the land of these people right there. But today, it's something different. Exodus 3, chapter 17. I have promised to bring you up out of the affliction of Egypt into the land of the Canaanites, the Atheites, the Amorites, the Perizzites, the Avites. And the Jebusites and the land flowing with milk and honey. Did America is a land flowing with milk and honey? Or is just flowing with pain and sorrow and miseries and slavery? Do not confuse my friend. There is so many misinterpretations. They take one and they use with them. When people say, I have a dream, I have a dream, one day, one day, all the people, Protestant, Catholic, Jewish, going to be same, going to be one. America is not the promised thing. If anyone tell you they see the promised land, they see black and white going to be together one day, They've been lied to you. Abaya will promise to our forefathers the land of Canaan is not the land of the United States of America. The land of showing with make an honey is the land of Canaan that we give to Abraham, Isaac, and Israel and its descendant forever, not the land of America. So there is so many misinterpretations about the scripture because they do not know the misuse of Yahweh. When we take the book of Exodus 12 chapter, 13 chapter verse 19, Exodus 13 chapter verse 19, Moshe took the bones of Joseph with him because Joseph had made the son of Israel swear and solemn oath. When he say, 
Yahweh will surely attend to you, and you shall carry my bones with you from this place. Joseph was a governor in Egypt. But he called his brothers. He said, swear to me, Yahweh will visit you. But the time Yahweh will steal you from this land, please don't let my bones in this land. As a governor, he never claimed Egypt to be his country. Why today we claim ourselves to be a citizen of the United States of America? You don't even know who you are. It's not because you are born in a country, mean you are a citizen of the country. The Israelites, when they went to Egypt, there was only 70 of them. But they was multiplied and so numerous you cannot count. They never claimed themselves, oh, I am an Egyptian, because they were born there. But now, because your son and daughter born in the United States, you think you are an American, and they call you African American? That make any sense to you? When you are a citizen of Yahweh kingdom, you're not going to call you black and white Americans or African Americans. You are a citizen of the kingdom of Yahweh. You are a citizen when black. And there is only one nation. is the nation of Israel. America is not a nation. It be with foreigners. Immigrants. Just like ancient Egypt. The children of Israel was immigrant. Just like we are immigrant today. The situation there is nothing new under the sun. What always has been, they has been, what already been done, they has been done. Yeah, we just repeat them. We are strangers on the land. The land full with milk and honey is not the United States of America. USA on the Satan authority. Not under Yahweh. On the certain authority. That's why they see one nation under God. When Yahweh choose only the children of Israel. My friend, I don't know about you, but I thanks to Yahweh for what it's been done to me and for what it's going to do for me, for what it's still doing for me. Let's take a book of Joshua, 24 chapter verse 32. And also the bone of Joseph, which the Israelites had brought up out of Egypt, were buried and shaken. And the plot of the land of Israel, as pushed from the son of Amor, second's father, for hundred pieces of silver. So it became an inheritance for your Joseph descendant. So the peace he buy is just for bury himself, not to live. Abaya will give them possession of the land of Canaan to live as a foreigners. But when you buy a land, it should be only to bury your dead, not to buy big houses to live. Just like everyone in the world, this is my land, this is my house. <laughs> That's funny, you know that? Is yours, but you cannot carry them with you. Nobody on any land. Yahweh say, all the earth is mine. But people could make, make a merchandise and something do not belong to them. Genesis 50, chapter verse 5. My father make me swear on hold and say, I am about to die. Bury me on the land, on the tomb I do for myself. In the land of Canaan, now let me go up and bury my father, then I will return. That's why you just tell to Pharaoh. Today, about you, my friend. My father made me swear and hold and say, I am about to be dying. Bury me on the tomb I dug for myself. That in the, the tomb he buy for himself. In the land of Canaan. Now, Joseph talked to Pharaoh. Now, 
Let me go up and bury my father, then I will return. Very sir, your request has been granted to you. Go bury your father in, the, in your land and coming back. Why we cannot do the same today? Why we say we are citizen when Joseph and all the children of Israel never claimed themselves to be a citizen of Egypt. But now, oh, I'm a citizen of the United States of America. Congratulations, my friend. But can you be a citizen in the two Kai kingdom? When Messiah so I stated that in John 18, 36, my kingdom is not of this world. Do that make sense to you? Are you are still a believer or you are not? Tell me the truth. Are you still a Christian? When you believe in two masters, which one you love better than the other? The kingdom of Yahweh or the kingdom of this world? Which one? When the time drew near for Israel to die, he called for his son Joseph and said to him, I have found favor in your eyes. Put soil under my tide and promise me that you will show me kindness and faithfulness. Do not bury me in Egypt. He never claimed himself to be a citizen of Egypt after all these years he spent. Nobody see how many times Joseph was spent in Egypt. But they told you the children of Israel will spend 40, 430 years in Egypt. No one ever become a citizen of Egypt. Why now, after five years, you have the authority and power to become a citizen of the United States of America? A citizen in the kingdom of Satan. My friend, there is so many things going on. But the word of Yahweh has to go to no matter what. So Abraham instructs the chief of servant of his household who manage all the honor, place your hand under my tide. You do the same thing. And promise me you're not going to take a wife from the land of Canaan for my son Isaac. He was leave. There is a beautiful woman in the land of Canaan. Why? He called his servant. He said, I want to put your hand under my tie and swear to me. And you're not going to take a wife from my son Isaac on the land I'm living, in the land of Canaan. Why? He has to send his servant to his country to take one of his relatives for his son Isaac, with Bika was the niece of Isaac. But today, we mix ourselves with anything we can't. Now, if you show me kindness and faithfulness to my master, tell me, but if not, let me know so that I may go as well. Genesis 27, verse 2. Look, say Isaac, I am now old. And do not know the day of my death. My father make me swear and hold. Then he saying, I'm about to die. You must bury me in the tomb that I buy for myself in the land of Canaan. Now let me go and bury my father and I will return. Then Yahweh said to Moshe, Behold, the time of your death is near. Call Joshua and present yourself at the tent of the meeting so that I may commission him. So Moshe and Joshua went and present themselves at the tent of a meeting. And Yahweh said to Moshe, You are sent against me. I will show you the land of Canaan I was promised to Abraham, Yitzhak, and Yaakov, but you are not going to enter into the land of Canaan. 
So all the promise they was making, Moses has to carry the bonds of Joseph when he leaves in Egypt. He don't leave his bonds in Egypt because he never claimed himself as a governor to be an Egyptian. 430 years, no one ever claimed themselves to be a citizen of Egypt. Why today it is okay for anybody to claim themselves they are citizens of the United States of America? Exodus 12, chapter verse 40. Now the Jewish son of the Israelite stay in Egypt was 430 years. 430 years. No one ever become a citizen. Do you know how many generation of generation never claim to be citizen? Because why? Yahweh was promised Abraham the whole land of Canaan, not the land of the United States of America. For our citizenship is not in this world but in paradise, from which also we actually wait for a savior, Messiah Yahshua. Beloved, I urge you as an alien and strangers to abstain from fleshly laws which, which war against the soul. That's Peter, First Peter 2 chapter verse 11. Beloved, I urge you as an alien, what alien mean? As a stranger, what is stranger mean? To abstain from fleshly loss, which weighs war against the soul. That means everything we're doing, the party we have drinking, firecrackers and everything, save money for years to celebrate a nonsense fourth of July. You are slave. Deuteronomy 28, chapter verse 68. State that Abba always say, if you not obey all his commandment, he will send you back to Egypt by ship. And a trip you will never see again. No man will buy you as a male and a female slave. The book of Deuteronomy. If anyone told you why people put you in slavery, you put yourself on slavery because you do not believe in the word of Yahweh. Because they don't touch. My people are destroyed because of lack of knowledge. Beloved, I urge you, as the aliens and the strangers, to abstain from fleshly loss, which was war against the soul. When you celebrate July the foot, what happened? You wish to war against your soul. The flesh they take over, drinking, sex, firecracker, barbecue, everything, fighting, shooting, and everything happened because you wish war against your soul. Because you celebrate Satan's holidays. Instead of celebrate Sabbath day every seven days. James 4 chapter verse 4. Your adulteries. Do you not know that? Friendship with the world is an hostility toward Yahweh. Therefore, whoever chooses to be a friend of the world becomes an enemy to Yahweh. Are you getting that, my friend? If you are a citizen of heaven, if you believe in Messiah Yahshua, the book of James, first chapter, verse four, stated, "You are adulterous." July the fourth about sex. When you drunk, what happened? You drink, you drunk, what happened? The flesh take over. So it was war against your soul. Do whatever you don't want to do because you don't have no control over it. Too much celebration for a pagan holidays. July the fourth. 
Should a Christian, should a believer celebrate July the 4th? My answer, no. You don't supposed to. You adulterers, do you know that? Friendship with the world is a hostility toward Yahweh. Therefore, whoever or anyone choose to be a friend of the world be called in enmity to Yahweh. You build a world between your creator by when you claim to be a Christian when you do what is not right. In order for you to claim yourself to be a citizen of the kingdom of Yahweh, you get the seal of the kingdom of Yahweh. You cannot have a seal of the kingdom of Satan. We say, as I say, no one, Matthew 6, chapter verse 24, no servant can serve two masters. I don't care who you are. You cannot walk in with Yahweh and hand in hand with Satan at the same time. You cannot eat on two tables, Yahweh tables and Satan tables. No man, no servant can serve two masters. You cannot love one and despise another one. You cannot be devoted to one and you hate the others. No servant can serve two masters. You cannot serve Satan and Yahweh. It gets more and more complicated, but there is a massive amount of evidence and documentation that has been published recently. Unbelievable. Most of this stuff was done in the 19th century. They don't like to admit this, but they've known this stuff for a hundred years. They don't like to admit this. The Tubingen School in Germany, they uh, completely discredited the four Gospels as valid sources, as historical documents. They recognize them for what they are as propaganda tracts. I mean, this is, this is just fact now amongst the scholars. Amongst devout Christians, you know, there's two types. There's the fundamentalists who don't uh, barely know how to read in the first place, but those who do know how to read choose not to read. They choose just to, that I believe this, the devil, um, devil's trying to trick me, the devil's trying to lead me astray, so I'm not going to listen to this. They consider the Muslims like devils. Once you start using logic and things like this and trying to, to bring rational argument to the discourse, it's a, this is inspired by the devil because it's sounds good, right? And this is the way they look at it. And then there's the intellectual Christian who's in a crisis, so they become Buddhist, Buddhist Christian. They do Zen uh, meditation and uh, have ecumenical, you know, we're all one and peace and love and, you know, Muslims, let's talk about it. And, you know, it's all one in the end of the day. This is the other. This is the, the liberal. You have the, the right wing and the left wing. And this is, the, this, is the, this is where they go. They tend to go. The right wing and the left wing. Take your choice. And this is where they end up in one of these camps. It's like in China to this day, the Chinese worship gods in their villages. And if the village starts doing poor economically, they'll go look for a village that's doing well economically and they'll throw away the gods that aren't benefiting them and they'll bring the gods from the village that's doing well economically. It's a very pragmatic type of idolatry. So this is what the, these people were doing. They were worshipping all of these idols. And the, the Mithraic teaching had, was, was the, the, the Mithraic God was born on December 25th. This is in their own, was the research that had been done, born on the, the December 25th. He was called Sol Invictus, the conquering sun god. The sun god. And this is why Christians worship on Sunday, not S-O-N, S-U-N. It's not the Son of God. It's Sunday, the day of soul, the day of the Sun God. And this is important, and it's going to be connected with the idea of the Messiah Dajjal, because the Messiah Dajjal is also a Sun God. The Sun God, they believed, 
was the giver of life. In the same way the sun gives life to plants through photosynthesis as we know in biology now. They, they believed that the sun god would also give life after death. People would die, they would be resurrected. In the same way that Mithra, who kills himself, he does an act of self-immolation and kills himself for the sins of mankind. He becomes a scapegoat. This is Mithra's act. He had 12 disciples. The disciples represented the 12 zodiacal constellations. Right? There are 12, you know, in horoscope, which we do not believe in. The, the Mithras believed in these 12 zodiacal constellations and each one of them represented a disciple. There is no number given of the Hawariyun. There's no number that says they were 12 in the Islamic tradition. And, and Jesus, quote unquote, making 13, which is what the Christians call the devil's number. Very interesting. I mean, they're so superstitious, they don't even have a 13th floor. In, I don't know if they do that here, but in the United States, you go from 12 to 14 in a, in a building. They don't have a 13th floor. So this is their number, they call that the devil's number, 13. And this is the number of Mithra and his disciples. Now what happens with Mithra, Paul literally takes the Mithraic teaching and embellishes it with aspects of the Christian teaching. In the Roman Empire is where the Vatican now stands. This is historical evidence. It is where the Vatican now stands. The mother of Mithra was worshipped. The mother of Mithra was worshipped. So this was all part of this uh, redaction of the Judaic teaching, the Semitic Christianity, becomes this Mithraic reality, completely transformed, completely altered, until it is unrecognizable. Saint Augustine and the Christians were so bothered by the similarities between Christianity and Mithraism that they would not mention Mithraism by its name. They called Mithra the fellow in the cap, the Phrygian cap. They wouldn't even mention him by his name. And Saint Augustine says in his writings that he met a priest from the fellow in the cap. And he said to Saint Augustine, you know, our, our man is a Christian also. In other words, it's really the same teaching and doctrine. The Christians completely wiped out the books, the temples, all of the evidence of Mithraism was completely wiped out. And that's why it's only recently, in the last hundred years, that scholars, anthropologists, and uh, archaeologists have been digging up all of this stuff and finding out about this teaching. Extraordinary. chapter verse 2 he said do not be conformed to this world but be transformed of the renewing of your mind then you will be able to discern that is the good pleasing and perfect will of Yahweh your creator are you there my friend the book of Romans 12 chapter verse 2 do not be conformed to this world. Those who are going to celebrate July the 4th is for you, my friend, who pretend themselves, claim themselves to be Christians, claim themselves to be a believer when you participate in any pagan holidays without knowing the head and the tails. Then you call yourself Christians, right? What is the meaning of Christians? What is the meaning of Christians? Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the winnowing of your mind. Then you will be able to discern that is then good, pleasing, and perfect will of Yahweh. Until you are still in this wicked world. Your mind is in the world. Everything is in the world. You cannot be discerned what is pleasing Yahweh. You cannot be 
please, Yahweh, because you are too much in this world. Whoever chooses to love what is in this world become a enmity to Yahweh. July the 4th is a holiday of this world. It's not a spiritual holiday. How can you call yourself a Christian, a believer, and you participate in any pagan holiday? When Yahweh say in the book of Jeremiah 10, chapter verse 2, do not follow the way of the hidden. They don't teach you that, dear. You? Your pastor says it's okay to participate, give you green light to sin against Yahweh. At time you destroy your own self. James, first chapter, verse 27. Pure and undefiled religion before Yahweh our Father. It is to care for orphans and widows and their distress and to keep oneself from being polluted by the world. Are you hear that, my friend? You want me to read again for you? I will do it for you, my friend. First James, first chapter, James, first chapter, verse 27. Pure and undefiled religion before Yahweh, our Father, it is to care for the widows, for the fatherless, and the distress, and to keep oneself from being polluted by the world. Are you care for the fatherless, for the widows, the poor on the street, instead of to save money for years to celebrate a pagan July the 4th? And when you're supposed to be slave, a foreigner, a stranger, a pilgrim? What the meaning to celebrate of July the 4th for you? What it do for you when they call you African Americans? But it's good for you. So you born in the country and they separate you completely. By telling you African American. That means they call you, this country is not yours. You come from Africa. That's what they told you. That's the message they give it to you. But some stupid fool thinking this is their country. It's not yours. That's why they call you African Americans, Cubans Americans, Haitian Americans. They give you a privilege to stay here, but they can do whatever they want with you because you are not a citizen of this country. I know you're not going to like me. I don't care. I'm ready to pay the price for anything. I'm not scared. The truth must be revealed to anyone. Like it or don't like it. Ephesians 2, chapter verse 2. And which you used to live when you follow the ways of this world. And the ruler of the kingdom of the air, the spirit who is now at work, and those who are disobedient. Listen carefully, my friend. I'm going to read word by word for you and explain to you but according to the will of Yahweh, not according to Daniel's will, not according to Daniel's understanding, but according to Yahweh, wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. Ephesians 2, chapter verse 2. And which you used to live when you follow the ways of this world. And the rulers of the kingdom of the air, the spirit who is now at work, and those who are disobedient. Let me take a moment to explain to you what's going on, my friend. There is a time I used to be working according to the standard of this world also. Because I do not know until Yahweh will rescue me from the darkness. And the ruler of the kingdom now working on the air, radio, television, everywhere means satellites, internet, Facebook, YouTubes, everything. Listen carefully. And the ruler of the kingdom of the air, the spirit who is now at work, and those who are disobedient. So those who are delinquent, who disobedient, they make them more rebel against their parents and their creator by using internet, the air, 
satellites, radio, television, Facebook, internet, in any ways to make them more disobedient. Now that spirit is at work and ever before, because they have more opportunity to deceive you, to lie to you by via on the air. Now everybody have a telephone. Long time it's not. So no matter what the music you are listening is a brainwash. No matter what you see on the Facebook, 99.999% is negatives. Maybe 0, 0, 0. 0.1% positives. So because that spirit now is working now, is at work, and those who are disobedient, but those who are obedient to Yahweh, they can because they don't watch television. They don't take a game, a violence game to play with. They with the scripture. They learn the word of Yahweh. Don't think your enemy is going to teach you what is good. Your enemies would never teach you what is good. They will teach you something to destroy you, destroy your soul. But they were not going to tell you what is good. When you take Facebook, what do you see? You put something positive, maybe one, one people express it, 99%. But you put sex, you put something, you have thousands of million views. And one second, because it's a negative, the world is nothing but evil. The book of Galatians, first chapter, verse 10. I am now trying to win the approval of human being or Yahweh. Or I am trying to please people. If I were still trying to please people, I will not be a servant of Messiah Yeshua. If anyone thinking Daniel gonna please them, my friend, you make big mistake in your life. I am not your pastor, and I am not your pastor, and I am not a pastor either. And I don't want it to be a pastor. I am now trying to win the approval of human being. No. Or Yahweh? Yes. Or I am trying to please people? No. If I were still trying to please people, I will not be a servant of Messiah Yahshua because I do not compromise in the word of Yahweh. Messiah Yahshua said, in this world, you will face trial and tribulations. You are no longer of this world because I take you out of this world. If my savior take me out of this world, why have to I have to fight back to return to this world? What is the meaning of this world? The evil ways. The way people acting. If you are a citizen of the kingdom of Yahweh, you cannot be participant on the kingdom of Satan. If it's okay to participate in the kingdom of this world, the scripture has something wrong. When Satan took Messiah Yahshua on the time of the temptation, he put him high to see exactly those kingdom of this world. Saying to Messiah Yahshua, do you see? All those kingdoms of this world, they are mine. They've been delivered to me. I will give to anyone I please. If you bow down and worship me, they can be yours too. Messiah Yahshua don't say they are not yours. He say, Satan, get his. Yahweh. You shall serve, and Yahweh, you should be worshipped unto. He never says Satan did not belong to you, because this world belongs for Satan. Big cars, big jets, big houses. Who created them? Yahweh created the earth and everything on it, but not big mention. Abraham never lived in the house for himself. Isaac never be living on the house. They always live on the tent. 
Now I'm blessed. I drive me a car. I say, I sure never have every opportunity to drive a car. I take airplane. I say, I sure never have every opportunity to every airplane. None one of his disciples. So everything is about this wicked world. John 15, chapter verse 19. If you belong to the world, he will be love you as his own. If you participate in July the 4th, that means you not belong to the kingdom of Yahweh. You are belong to Satan. That's what July the 4th is all about. As it is, you do not belong to the world. But I have chosen you out of the world. That is why the world hates you. Are you there, my friend? So if they say, so I choose you out of this world, you not belong on this world, and you call yourself a Christian, a believer, how come you can be participate in things of this world? I want you to take, be careful, sit down, and read the book of John 15, chapter verse 19. If you belong to the world, he will love you as his own. In order for the world to love you, you have to be his own. Satan loves Satan, but if you are not Satan, they will not going to love you. But say, so I say, at Easter, you do not belong to the world, but I have chosen you out of the world. That is why the world hates you. People don't like me because I'm telling the truth by the power of Yahweh because Messiah so I chose me out of the world. Messiah so I say, if you abide in my word, you are indeed my disciple. You will know the truth and the truth will set you free or make you free. Take one of the translation because there's so many confusion about the translation. If you belong to the world, you will love you at its own. The world will going to love, love me because I'm not belong to the world. The way I Yahweh give me to proclaim his words is not just like those pastors, those imposters, those ministers, those rabbis, those spiritual leaders preaching. There's a difference between the lies, delusion, and the truth. So the world hates you because you are no longer a part of this world. Thank you, Abba Yahweh. I am not what I used to be. I am not what I want to be, but I am what Yahweh want me to be. Thank you, Abba Yahweh, for your grace, mercy, and your compassion and your love toward me. First John 5, chapter verse 4. For everyone who has been born of Yahweh overcome the world. In order for you to overcome this wicked world, all the temptation, it is a must for you to burn of Yahweh. For this is the victory that has overcome the world, our faith. That's deep, eh? For everyone, First John 1 chapter verse 4, for everyone who has been born of Yahweh, overcome the world in order for you to overcome that temptation of the july the foot it is a must for you to have yahweh's spirit if you don't have yahweh's spirit my friend you call yourself a christians a believers you don't even know what the meaning of christians anyway you don't even because there's two kind of believers you might believe in yahweh you might believe in satan there's two kind of spirit Yahweh's spirit and Satan's spirit. But the light always pours the darkness. Do not work together with unbelievers. How can you call yourself a believer in Yahshua and you yoke yourself with those who do not believe? That make any sense? If you have to celebrate as a Christian, as a believer, you have to say with a spiritual feast, Sabbath day. If you say with Sabbath day, you're okay, but you say it's July the 4th, you're in trouble. If you celebrate Thanksgiving days, Christmas day, birthday, all those are pagans in nature. Yahweh say in the book of Revelations, 18 chapter verse 4, 
Come out of her, my people, if you do not want to be partaker in her sins, in her plagues. Whatever you see now, my friend, is just the beginning. He say, as you are saying, many shall come in my name and deceive many. Many, even the select one will be deceived, if possible. Whatever you see, it's just the beginning of Yaakov trouble. The sickness, the disease, is just the beginning. If you know to be particular in her sins and her prayers, it is a must to come out of her. Yahweh pray for the children of Israel to come out from Babylonian system, from the heading holidays, birthday party, Christmas, New Year's, Thanksgiving, Halloween, July the foot. All those pagans are the days I we call the children of Israel. If you don't want to be partake in a sense and in a place, it is a most to come out of it. For everyone who has been born of Yahweh overcome the world. And this is the victory that has overcome the world, our faith. You cannot have two faiths, faith in Yahweh and faith in Satan. That cannot be worked that way, my friend. You double-minded cannot receive nothing. You have to be one mind, one aqua, one spirit. If you are double-minded, you have to receive nothing because you won't deceive yourself. Verse 5. Who then overcome the world? Only he who believe that Messiah Yeshua is Yahweh in the flesh. Are you there? You sure you understand? First John 5, chapter verse 5. Who then overcome the world? Only he who believes. But Messiah Yahshua, not Jesus, but Messiah Yahshua is Yahweh in the flesh. First John 4, chapter verse 4. You little children are from Yahweh and have overcome the world because greater he is who is in you than he who in this world. Wow. Hallelujah. Praise be to Yahweh. First John 4, chapter verse 4. You little children are from Yahweh and have overcome the world because greater is he who is in you than he who is in this world. Because Yahweh's spirit is greater in you and that is in Satan. So if you have Yahweh's spirit in you, Satan cannot touch you. Because what is in you is greater, bigger, stronger than that is in Satan. First John 5, 18. We know that anyone born of Yahweh do not keep on sinning. The one who has born of Yahweh protect him, and the evil one cannot touch him. Touch not my anointing, do my prophet no harm. They will be persecuted you. Of course, yes. But guess what? Only if Yahweh give them permission. I want you to read the book of First John 5, 18. We know that anyone born of Yahweh do not keep on sinning. The one who has born of Yahweh protect from Yahweh. And the evil one cannot touch him. Because there is no desire of the flesh. The one who has born of Yahweh protects by Yahweh. And the evil one cannot touch him. John 14, chapter verse 30. 
I will not speak with you much longer. For the prince of this world, who is the prince of this world? Satan is coming and he has no claim on me. He says to his disciples, you know something? I will not blame talk no longer with you because the kings of the earth of this world is coming. The prince of this world is coming and he has no claim on me. That means I don't have anything to do with him. So don't have anything to do with the world also. If anyone become a friend of this world, you become a traumatic, a enmity to Yahweh. You build a wall between you and your creator when you bluff in yourself, when you lie to people around you, call yourself a believer when you are not. Because you belong to your father, the devil. We know that we are of Yahweh and that the whole world is under the power of the evil one. What you see happen today all over the world? Chaos. No one has a peace of mind. Why? Because the scripture makes it very clear, simple with you, my friend. We know that we are of Yahweh and that the whole world is under the power of the evil one. Only those who belong to Yahweh have a peace in mind. But the world is tormented. Why? Because it's under the power of the evil one. The evil now rules the earth. Yahweh is still in control because of his people. But you imagine if Yahweh close his eyes for one second, kaboom. We know that we are of Yahweh, that the whole world is under the power of the evil one. If Abba Yahweh will cure you from darkness, my friend, if Abba Yahweh saying in his world, my kingdom is not of this world. If you participate in July the 4th, who you think you belong to? Choose for yourself today whom you will serve. Yahweh or Satan? July the 4th is not a spiritual feast. It's Satan feast. By drinking, by having sex, barbecue, firecrackers, accident, shooting, and everything. Moses never celebrates. Any pagans are in the bed. Only every Sabbath, every seven days, they celebrate Sabbath. This is the independence day of Yahweh, your creator. Six days do your labor, but seven days is Yahweh. Yahweh created everything in six days. And he rested. He refreshed it. And he commanded the children of Israel to remember the Sabbath day, to obey his certified. Abba do not command the children of Israel to remember July the 4th, the independence of the pagans country. And Abba Yahweh never promised the children of Israel the land of the United States of America as the promised land. Instead, Abba Yahweh promised Abraham, Yitzhak, and Israel, the land of Canaan, the land full with milk and honey. America is not a land full with milk and honey. It's a land full with sorrow and shameful things. Distress, slavery, that's what we see. Remember my friend, Paul said in 2 Corinthians 4 and 4, Satan, do the God of this world, is blinded the mind of the unbelievers in order not to believe on the good news of Messiah Yahshua. May the light might be shine upon them. They can receive grace and mercy. In the time of ignorance, Abba Yahweh overlook it. Now command every man, every man everywhere, 
to repent. Indeed, Christians should celebrate July the 4th. Can a man serve two masters? Can a man get the two feet, one outside, one inside? Can the door be closed? Can you love one master and hate the other one? Can you love one master and despise the other one? Can you hold in with Yahweh and walk with the devil at the same time? No man can serve two master. My friend, Joshua was still almost 3,400 years ago. Then the children of Israel choose today whom you will serve. Joshua said, I for me and my house we will serve Yahweh. Choose today whom you will serve. I take the paradise and the earth as a witness against you today. If you don't do what is right, all the curse which is in the book, even those who are not written on the book, are going to be upon you. There's a blessing. There's a curse. Choose the blessing. There is death. There is life. Choose life. My friend, govern yourself. Because the judgment day is happening. As Messiah Shua said, my kingdom is not of this world. I choose you out of this world. You no longer belong to this world. That's the reason why the world hates you. My friend, as a stranger, as a foreigner, America is not your land. The land Abaya will give to our forefathers and to his descendant forever to possess is the land of Canaan. Don't think in you are a citizen of the United States. If you are a citizen of the United States, that means you are a citizen of the kingdom of Satan, not of Yahweh. May Yahweh bless you and govern yourself. I am Messenger Daniel. Until next time, say Shalom Alehem and peace. Mean to all of you.
Right. 